Bodybuilding Supplement, Wikipedia Article Audio Bodybuilding supplements are dietary supplements commonly used by those involved in bodybuilding, weightlifting, mixed martial arts, and athletics for the purpose of facilitating an increase in lean body mass. The intent is to increase muscle, increase body weight, improve athletic performance, and for some sports, to simultaneously decrease percent body fat so as to create better muscle definition. Among the most widely used are high protein drinks, branched chain amino acids, glutamine, arginine, essential fatty acids, creatine, HMB, and weight loss products. Supplements are sold either as single ingredient preparations or in the form of stacks proprietary blends of various supplements marketed as offering synergistic advantages. While many bodybuilding supplements are also consumed by the general public the frequency of use will differ when used specifically by bodybuilders. One meta-analysis concluded that for athletes participating in resistance exercise training and consuming protein supplements for an average of 13 weeks, total protein intake up to 1.6 g/kg of body weight per day would result in an increase in strength and fat-free mass, i.e. muscle, but that higher intakes would not further contribute. The muscle mass increase was statistically significant but modest, averaging 0.3 kg for all trials and 1.02.0 kg, for protein intake greater than or equal to 1.6 g kg day. As of 2010, annual sales of sport nutrition products in the United States was over 2.7 billion US dollars according to a publication by Consumer Reports. History Controversy Athletes in ancient Greece were advised to consume large quantities of meat and wine. A number of herbal concoctions and tonics have been used by strong men and athletes since ancient times across cultures to try to increase their strength and stamina. In the 1910s, Eugen Sando, widely considered to be the first modern bodybuilder in the West, advocated the use of dietary control to enhance muscle growth. Later, Bodybuilder Earl Lederman advocated the use of beef juice or beef extract as a way to enhance muscle recovery. In 1950s with recreational and competitive bodybuilding becoming increasingly popular Irvin P. Johnson began to popularize and market egg-based protein powders marketed specifically at bodybuilders and physical athletes. The 1970s and 1980s marked a dramatic increase in the growth of the bodybuilding supplement industry, fueled by widespread use of modern marketing techniques and a marked increase in recreational bodybuilding. In October 1994, the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act was signed into law in the USA. Under DSHEA, responsibility for determining the safety of the dietary supplements changed from government to the manufacturer and supplements no longer required approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration before distributing product. Since that time manufacturers did not have to provide FDA with the evidence to substantiate safety or effectiveness unless a new dietary ingredient was added. It is widely believed that the 1994 DSHEA further consolidated the position of the supplement industry and lead to additional product sales. While many of the claims are based on scientifically based physiological or biochemical processes, their use in bodybuilding parlance is often heavily colored by bodybuilding lore and industry marketing and as such may deviate considerably from traditional scientific usages of the terms. In addition, ingredients listed have been found at times to be different from the contents. In 2015, Consumer Reports reported unsafe levels of arsenic, cadmium, lead and mercury in several of the protein powders that were tested.
In the United States, the manufacturers of dietary supplements do not need to provide the Food and Drug Administration with evidence of product safety prior to marketing. As a result, the incidence of products adulterated with illegal ingredients has continued to rise. In 2013, one third of the supplements tested were adulterated with unlisted steroids. More recently, the prevalence of designer steroids with unknown safety and pharmacological effects has increased. In 2015 a CBC investigative report found that protein spiking was not uncommon, however many of the companies involved challenged these claims. Mislabeling and Adulteration The US FDA reports 50,000 health problems a year due to dietary supplements and these often involve bodybuilding supplements. For example, the natural bestseller craze, 2012's new supplement of the year by Bodybuilding.com, widely sold in stores such as Walmart and Amazon, was found to contain an alpha-diethylphenylethylamine, a methamphetamine analog. Other products by Matt Cahill have contained dangerous substances causing blindness or liver damage and experts say that Cahill is emblematic for the whole industry. The incidence of liver damage from herbal and dietary supplements is about 16-20% of all supplement products causing injury, with the occurrence growing globally over the early 21st century. The most common liver injuries from weight loss and bodybuilding supplements involve hepatocellular damage with resulting jaundice and the most common supplement ingredients attributed to these injuries are catechins from green tea, anabolic steroids, and the herbal extract, egeline. Health Problems In addition to being potentially harmful, some have argued that there is little evidence to indicate any benefit to using bodybuilding protein or amino acid supplements. In view of the lack of compelling evidence to the contrary, no additional dietary protein is suggested for healthy adults undertaking resistance or endurance exercise. In dispute of this, one more recent meta-analysis concluded that for athletes participating in resistance exercise training and consuming protein supplements for an average of 13 weeks, total protein intake up to 1.6 grams per kg body weight per day would result in an increase in strength and fat-free mass, i.e. muscle, but that higher intakes would not further contribute. The muscle mass increase was statistically significant but modest, averaging 0.3 for all trials and 1.0 to 2.0 kilograms for protein intake greater than or equal to 1.6 g-kg-day. Bodybuilders may supplement their diets with protein for reasons of convenience, lower cost, ease of preparation, and to avoid the concurrent consumption of carbohydrates and fats. In addition, some argue that bodybuilders, by virtue of their unique training and goals, require higher than average quantities of protein to support maximal muscle growth, however there is no scientific consensus for bodybuilders to consume more protein than the recommended dietary allowance. Protein supplements are sold in ready-to-drink shakes, bars, meal replacement products, bites, oats, gels and powders. Protein powders are the most popular and may have flavoring added for palatability. The powder is usually mixed with water, milk, or fruit juice and is generally consumed immediately before and after exercising or in place of a meal. The sources of protein are as follows and differ in protein quality depending on their amino acid profile and digestibility. Some nutritionists claim that osteoporosis may occur from excessive protein intake because protein can put pressure on the kidneys and lead to bone loss due to calcium leaching. However, 
some have suggested that higher calcium excretion may be due to a corresponding increase in protein-induced calcium absorption in the intestines. Liver Damage In addition to complete proteins, some supplements will contain protein that has been partially hydrolyzed to short peptide chains or individual amino acids. Amino acids have been used by some companies to artificially inflate and falsify protein values in their product. Many protein supplements explicitly indicate on the label that no protein spiking has occurred. Lack of effectiveness some bodybuilders believe that amino acid supplements may benefit muscle development, but consumption of such supplements is unnecessary in a diet that already includes adequate protein intake. Protein Prohormones are precursors to hormones and are most typically sold to bodybuilders as a precursor to the natural hormone testosterone. This conversion requires naturally occurring enzymes in the body. Side effects are not uncommon, as prohormones can also convert further into DHT and estrogen. To deal with this, many supplements also have aromatase inhibitors and DHT blockers such as crisin and 4-androstene 3,6,17 trioni. To date most prohormone products have not been thoroughly studied, and the health effects of prolonged use are unknown. Although initially available over the counter, their purchase was made illegal without a prescription in the US in 2004, and they hold similar status in many other countries. They remain legal, however, in the United Kingdom and the wider European Union. Their use is prohibited by most sporting bodies. Creatine is an organic acid naturally occurring in the body that supplies energy to muscle cells for short bursts of energy via creatine phosphate replenishment of ADP. A number of scientific studies have shown that creatine can improve strength, energy, muscle mass, and recovery times. In addition, Recent studies have also shown that creatine improves brain function and reduces mental fatigue. Unlike steroids or other performance-enhancing drugs, creatine can be found naturally in many common foods such as herring, tuna, salmon, and beef. Amino Acids Creatine increases what is known as cell volumization by drawing water into muscle cells making them larger. This intracellular retention should not be confused with the common myth that creatine causes bloating. Creatine is sold in a variety of forms, including creatine monohydrate and creatine ethyl ester, amongst others. Though all types of creatine are sold for the same purposes, there are subtle differences between them, such as price and necessary dosage. In the New Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding, 2nd ed., author Arnold Schwarzenegger states, Creatine monohydrate is regarded as a necessity by most bodybuilders. Creatine monohydrate is the most cost-effective dietary supplement in terms of muscle size and strength gains. There is no preferred creatine supplement but it is believed that creatine works best when it is consumed with simple carbohydrates. This can be accomplished by mixing powdered creatine with grape juice, lemonade, or many high glycemic index drinks. Some studies have suggested that consumption of creatine with protein and carbohydrates can have a greater effect than creatine combined with either protein or carbohydrates alone. Prohormones When combined with an appropriate exercise program, dietary supplementation with beta-hydroxy-beta-methylbutyrate has been shown to dose-dependently augment gains in muscle hypertrophy, muscle strength, and lean body mass, reduce exercise-induced skeletal muscle damage, and expedite recovery from high-intensity exercise.
HMB is believed to produce these effects by increasing muscle protein synthesis and decreasing muscle protein breakdown by various mechanisms, including activation of the mechanistic target of rapamycin and inhibition of the proteasome in skeletal muscles. Creatine the inhibition of exercise-induced skeletal muscle damage by HMB is affected by the time that it is used relative to exercise. The greatest reduction in skeletal muscle damage from a single bout of exercise appears to occur when calcium HMB is ingested 1-2 hours prior to exercise. Whey protein contains high levels of all the essential amino acids and branched-chain amino acids. It also has the highest content of the amino acid cysteine, which aids in the biosynthesis of glutathione. For bodybuilders whey protein provides amino acids used to aid in muscle recovery. Whey protein is derived from the process of making cheese from milk. There are three types of whey protein, whey concentrate, whey isolate, and whey hydrolysate. Whey concentrate is 29.89% protein by weight whereas whey isolate is 90% plus protein by weight. Whey hydrolysate is enzymatically predigested and therefore has the highest rate of digestion of all protein types. Whey protein is usually taken immediately before and after a workout, casein protein has glutamine, and casomorphin. Casein is usually taken before going to bed, soy protein from soybeans contain isoflavones, a type of phytoestrogen, egg white protein is a lactose and dairy free protein, hemp protein from hemp seed, contains highly digestible protein, and hemp oil is high in essential fatty acids, rice protein, when made from the whole grain is a protein source that is highly digestible and allergen free. Since rice protein is low in the amino acid lysine, it is often combined with pea protein powder to achieve a superior amino acid profile. Pea protein is a hypoallergenic protein with a lighter texture than most other protein powders. Pea protein has an amino acid profile similar to that of soy but pea protein does not elicit concerns about unknown effects of phytoestrogens. Pea protein is also less allergenic than soy. Pea protein has high fiber content and has no allergic ingredients and therefore is easy for digestion as compared to whey protein. Pea protein is a slow digesting protein and is able to keep you full longer. Meal replacement products are either pre-packaged powdered drink mixes or edible bars designed to replace prepared meals. MRPs are generally high in protein, low in fat, have a low to moderate amount of carbohydrates, and contain a wide array of vitamins and minerals. The majority of MRPs use whey protein, casein, soy protein, and slash or egg albumin as protein sources. Carbohydrates are typically derived from maltodextrin, oat fiber, brown rice, and slash or wheat flour. Some MRPs also contain flax oil powder as a source of essential fatty acids. MRPs can also contain other ingredients such as creatine monohydrate, glutamine peptides, L-glutamine, calcium alpha-ketoglutarate, additional amino acids, lactoferrin, conjugated linoleic acid, and medium-chain triglycerides. Beta-hydroxybetamethylbutyrate Meal replacement products Thermogenic products a subclass of MRPs is colloquially known as weight gainers, which are meal replacement products with a higher carbohydrate protein ratio. Whereas a MRP will typically have a 0.25-2 colon 1 carbohydrate protein ratio, a weight gainer might have a ratio in the order of 3-5 colon 1. 
A thermogenic is a broad term for any supplement that the manufacturer claims will cause thermogenesis, resulting in increased body temperature, increased metabolic rate, and consequently an increased rate in the burning of body fat and weight loss. Until 2004 almost every product found in this supplement category comprised the ECA stack, ephedrine, caffeine, and aspirin. However, on February 6, 2004 the Food and Drug Administration banned the sale of ephedra and its alkaloid, ephedrine, for use in weight loss formulas. Several manufacturers replaced the ephedra component of the ECA stack with bitter orange or citrus arantium instead of the ephedrine. Notes